Morgan is so expressive. She smiles and she lights up the room. She just loves watching what's happening and singing songs. When I was pregnant, I was just full of anticipation and expecting all good things. We came home and had many months of pure bliss. We were just in love with our perfect little girl. We had no indication of any problem. No, we had no idea. We had no idea. At six months, Dr. Angelo mentioned we might start thinking about early intervention. Morgan initially wasn't growing, and then closer to about a year or so, all parts of her development were delayed. Morgan's nowhere near a five-year-old level. They are running and jumping and reading and talking. Morgan is more like a two-year-old, maybe a three-year-old. Moving through the world is difficult for her. She needs help getting out of bed, getting dressed, staying engaged. She's just not always able to coordinate her movements. She's not communicating the way that she's supposed to. Her speech hasn't developed. For three years, we searched and searched. Test after test revealed no answers. We had some initial genetic tests done, and they too showed nothing unusual. It wasn't until our developmental pediatrician suggested a test that had only recently become available, whole exome sequencing, and it looks at genes with even greater magnification, and it was the only test that could detect what was going on. They identified a single point mutation on a gene that's called HNRNPH2. Every person has about 20,000 genes. Morgan has a very tiny mistake on just one of those genes. In almost every form of life, there's an HNRNPH2 gene, and it never changes. For there to be a mistake, they've hardly ever seen this. In our mind, this was the most devastating result we could have found. Morgan has seen a pediatric ophthalmologist, she's seen pediatric neurologist, she's seen pediatric endocrinologist, so it's still a puzzle that needs to be put together. Morgan's diagnosis is probably the third. Now we're up to 18 to 20 girls who have the same diagnosis as Morgan, and that's throughout the world. Since whole exome sequencing has become more available, we are learning about new cases all the time. Eventually, we may find that this rare disease is not so rare after all. I think the thing that scares me the most about the future are those unknowns. Is she gonna be okay? I really wanna help her to feel safe and confident and um, to know that we believe in her. There's a lot of things that are holding her back. There's a lot of things that are keeping her from being completely free and having wings in this life. The next big step is to fund research. Genetic research is on the cusp of making a difference in people's lives. Autism, cancer, ALS, Rett syndrome, other X-linked disorders, we can learn more about all of them. We really need to fund research and that really can be the ultimate game changer. How can we intervene on this? How can we make an impact? How can we make their lives better? I've always been someone who really believes in visioning what you want your future to be. On Morgan's vision board, we have, I will climb the stairs with confidence. I will say goodbye to pull-ups forever. I will say mama and dada and Shaney. Creating the foundation for us has everything to do with not just lying down and accepting it without putting up a fight. I think we have a real opportunity to make an impact on not only Morgan's life, but others as well. We're fighting for every parent out there that's searching for answers, for every family affected by a genetic disorder. We have to do this so that we can fight for our daughter, give her the best life that she can have. That's why we're doing this.